concert. Yeah, yeah <laughs> That was my Frank Mullen impersonation, which failed miserably. You sounded like Grover from Sesame Street. Oh, my God. It's not Grover. <laughs> Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster. <laughs> Cookie Monster. <laughs> Whoever, you sounded like him. Guys, it's Friday night. It's happy oh, hour. God. I'm your host, Connie Henriquez, and my crazy co-host, Chrissy Bond. What's up? Glad to be back. Dude, we have not been here in two weeks. I know. We've been away. We're Connie back. Connie decided to go to Japan. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? We'd be going to Japan for Frank from Suffocation. Yeah. Who knew? Anyway, <laughs> we're super excited to be back. We have a live studio audience. So the I show's going to be extra, extra good because that's how it rolls when we have fun. That's right. Positive energy in the I know, room. I love right? it. I love it, because usually yeah. it's just Andrew and Jeff, and they're not saying anything. Right, and we're like, Hello? They're, they're Hello. sleeping, he's right. farting in the chair. Right. I don't know what the hell they're doing. What's going on, right? It's unbelievable. I'm like, Chrissy, is that your boyfriend? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> up, please. <laughs> but we're super excited. Just think, everyone's had a long week. It's been yep. raining all week oh, long out. What it. is that about? Oh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> I'm gonna just what say a horror. Yeah. It's the, it's the universe because we just had new plants put in. Oh yeah, that's and right. I'm gonna They're say beautiful. the rain is gonna make them grow three feet every single month. Oh my the god! Week. I'm just saying. Nice just shrubbery saying. you have there. <laughs> exactly. So just so you guys know, it's Friday night's happy hour. You can also have happy hour on Saturday at noon. Oh yeah. If you have cable vision. Because her you, and I will be drinking at noon at on noon, tomorrow. That's what we do. <laughs> if you have Fios, sorry guys. Yeah, Fios, you're out. You're out. But so tomorrow at noon, you can catch us on Channel 20. At 12. At 12. Yeah. And what else? You can see us at like 4 in the morning. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, we have her here. I wrote it down. If you're raging so, tonight, somewhere. So Saturday at 4 a.m. Yep. And I will tell you, we go to many events, and yeah. people are like, oh my god, I caught you last night. We're like, what? And only at Governors, right. though, where the They're comedians like, are up all night. 4 a.m. I'm like, yeah. that's great. I love that people are watching at 4 a.m. Because I'm sleeping, hopefully. And I love that the one guy said it to us, like, nonchalantly. Oh, I caught you guys at 4 a.m. Oh, yeah. you were up at 4 a.m.? All right. Thanks, we're John, like, yeah, for watching. Yeah, we were watching that episode, too. <laughs> and then also, Mondays at 2.30 a.m. So if you can't sleep before that big <laughs> Monday day when you have to go to work, catch us at 2.30. Because we'll be on. <laughs> and we'll start your week out right. Exactly. On a positive note. <laughs> on a positive note. Right. So, uh, so, dude, we both had very interesting weeks. Tell yes. Me about it well, you had a more interesting week than I did. You but were in I, Japan. I, I was see, on Long Island. <laughs> I see my little favorite boys here. Yes. And you my nephews did their moving up ceremony. They're going into sixth grade. Oh. Which, Wait. did you know sixth grade is now in the high school? No. No, when I was Wait, in sixth in grade, it, I'm sorry, the junior high school. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go in the on. junior high school, but when I, yeah, it's in college. It's in they're college. going, to, they're going to Farmingdale. <laughs> <laughs> but when we were in sixth grade, I was still in elementary school. So was I. So they're going to the junior high now in East Islip. That's scary. Yes. Yeah, so I was back in my East Islip high school for their moving up ceremony. Uh -huh. Connie was at my uh, high school looking for my class clown uh, award. <laughs> award. So did you find it? So for anyone who doesn't watch the show. Show, which I doubt <laughs> if you don't know this already because Chrissy mentions it on yes. every single show. It's my biggest accomplishment, Shocker, guys. Shocker, which that's more depressing than anything. I don't think so. I'm very proud she of it, was, guys. She was voted uh, Class Clown. Oh, Class Clown. 1994 East Islip, right. Redmond. <laughs> EI Pride. Wow. EI Pride. Thank EI Pride. Go, Redmond. So I was actually there because one of my kid clients. I couldn't believe when you texted me that you were there. I well, so believe she's it. a professional dancer and she's amazing. And so her recital was at East Islip High School. I can't believe it. So Jeff and I go there and I'm like, I think Chrissy went here. <laughs> So I'm like, go get a picture. Did you something. walk around and look for me? No, I was joking. I said, go get a picture of East Islip, something in here. And I said, let's send it to Chrissy. So I'm like, dude, look where I am. She's like, no way. What are you doing there? I'm like, ah, oh, you know. Because you had to leave for Japan the next I know. morning. Well, it was your eyes the night before. I was surprised that you were there. That was dedication because I love my kids. Oh, but. very nice, Connie. So then I'm like, don't worry, dude. I'm going to look for your award. You she's never like, looked for it. You like, didn't look for it. Go do it. There is no award. She didn't look for it. Yeah, it is. I'm in there, guys. Somewhere in there, I'm in there, Jeff. You didn't even look for me. <laughs> yeah, I guess we must have missed it. But anyway, I was happy. I'm the one, the clown. I got the wig on. <laughs> the nose, the lips. Exactly. The, the shoes. Yeah. You missed it. Whatever. <laughs> But I was juggling. Like, I'm yeah. a great juggler. Yeah. Were you juggling Tito's? I, I just juggled that. two. I just juggled the two balls. That's I'm um, gonna ah, whatever. Not a lot of but I'm very proud of Ethan and Mason. They're moving up into sixth grade. I can't oh, yeah, believe that's it. Scary. Yeah, it is scary. But they're great boys. 
And one of the teachers there, when we walked in, she said, they're the nicest boys in all of JFK. Aww. Is that true? That's what she That's said cool. to me and my brother-in-law. Wow. And they are. They, it's how you brought up. Well, they, have, they have the best manners I've ever seen at any age at is, any boy. It is true, because they came to one of our shows, and it was so cute. And you were worried about it. And it was, was Connie no, Marulis was no, our guest. I was, no, I was, Connie was I worried. Was I'm like, my sense. nephews are no. coming. No, they come. and they're, She's like, oh, geez. First of all, they're the cutest kids ever. But yeah. what happened was. I they brought all their so listen, figures. They, they come downstairs, and they take all their army dolls. <laughs> And the army they, they, they line it up on the table. So I didn't realize they were behind right. me. So I go, what the <laughs> some bomb is this? Right? And I, and I SpongeBob, really like, everybody was lined right. up. And the kids were like, oh, oh, man, man. oh move it, oh, move it. And I was like, oh Same. my God, I didn't realize they were behind me. <laughs> so I will say, Ethan and Mason, I love they're you. They're very good listeners. You follow direction. Okay? They, of course they do. I was Look crying. at their parents. They're both teachers. I know, you guys. When your parents are teachers, you have no choice. It's like, nah. Nah, nah. Everything is scheduled. Diana, you get your spot on. And Frank, you guys are spot on. <laughs> we could never be teachers. I'd be nah. like, ah, whatever. Me and Connie would be terrible. Yeah. We're like, all right, kids, do whatever right. you want. I am you know hungover. I'm happy. That's the joy of life. I was Don't drinking Tito's all time. night at JT's on the bay with Connie. Eating a steak, <laughs> macaroni and cheese. Mac and cheese. All right. So, yeah. So, Jeff and I were away last week. We went to Japan. Yeah, how it was, was amazing. it? Frank! Yes, from Japan! You guys yeah. were with Frank from Suffocation. <laughs> it was all, all right. about Frank, though. <laughs> anyway, so I was very frightened. Okay, can I go to? Can I come back to me? So we, uh, Jeff and I, I in the top best. I know. I, I can't. can't. Forget it. Right, you did some. You cover. did some go karting thing. Great. Let's get back to Frank. <laughs> So Jeff and I did the Mario Coke Hearts. Okay? I saw that. It looked terrifying. So Connie. we did 50 miles per hour. Oh my God! Coke Heart in Tokyo. It was the scariest oh. thing ever, and I prayed the whole time, and I survived. I prayed the obviously. whole time. But what's so fun is you get to dress up in costumes. That's I thought me. you just did that willingly. I didn't no, know. No, they encourage huh. it. But I will tell you that. Why do you have to wear the mask, though, Connie? Because of fumes. Oh. You're low to the ground. <laughs> Okay. But I will tell you there was a big lawsuit between Nen Nintendo. And no. Yes. So you couldn't do a Mario Brothers character. No. I was my Melody, which is like a my kid. I didn't know who Hello that was. Hello Kitty character. Yeah, you looked like Hello yeah, Kitty. Pink. Yeah, yeah. It was pink. And Jeff and was Jeff Captain, was Captain, Captain. America. <laughs> was, he's, he's my Captain America. So Aww. He did a great job. But it was very frightening. But I saw <laughs> And I'm happy I and did. And you said it lasted two hours? It was two hours. I can't believe it was that I long. I was That's praying crazy. the whole time. But... <laughs> Jeff I'm was here. All right, this is great. Right, I'm so happy because you know when you do something, it's great. Anyway, the other thing is, we oh, that's cool. When Harajuku, you did that, yeah. There's a, a store that is dedicated to entire I love photo this. booths. I love that. We would and, love that. <laughs> right, and what I found out, you know, when you go on online dating and of you course. see how their pictures are entirely different. Yes. Well, Jeff and I took photos, and we looked entirely different than who we I are. I saw that when you posted it on Facebook. Look at that. <laughs> We have no lines. My yeah. eyes are this big, and my lips are red. You know what? They have that soft focus it thing is. on it. It is. Never mean you always try to figure out how to yes. do that. Now I know. Smart. Yeah, they Very are. Very smart. They're the ones that invent the apps. Yes. Well, that is the app. Oh, my God, So, guys. I will say, for online dating, just work it out. Just know, move to Japan. See what happens. <laughs> move to Japan if you want to do online dating. the surprised when they show up. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but then we also saw this big Buddha, which is behind us. I love the Buddha. Huge. It was super fun. If I'm going to go to Japan, I'm going to check out a Buddha. Of course. And uh, and then we saw some big bamboo sticks. I don't I know. I love that. It's pretty big. Some big bamboo sticks. The like big a, bamboo. It looked like a big forest, but I got to tell you, it was like the size of this room. <laughs> Wasn't that big? Really? It's very deceiving. I oh. wouldn't have paid the five, whatever I paid <gasps> Are you there. kidding me? It was not big at all. Oh, my God. I know. What a scam, guys. <laughs> what that? Yes, 500, it was $5. Whatever. 500 yen. I thought it was a forest. It wasn't 500 a forest. Yen. It wasn't big. Oh, my God. And then luckily from our hotel, we were able to see Mount Oh, my Disney. God. That's I cool. I don't know, Jeff said it was a big deal. That's a great picture. Whoever took that picture, good that job. That was Jeff. He's Jeff, a photographer. you're an amazing photographer. But we have a photographer in the audience. Where I the hell's your camera? David. David. David, where's your camera? Next oh, time. My God. That's right. So we saw Mount Fuji. We're excited because apparently you don't get to see it that often because it's very close. That's so cool. Or I don't know. Anyway, so uh, because you want to catch up with our <laughs> antics, 
Don't forget to subscribe to us. <laughs> We're on Instagram at Date Night TV. Follow um, us. Follow us. Oh. Don't tweet us because we don't do that, guys. I don't hate. I, yeah. Yeah. And, and like you, us if, on Facebook. Like Dana with Connie and Chris. Yeah, so you know where we're on. So you can be part of the fun. All right, guys. You ready for my store living life tip of the week? Oh, I forgot about it. I thought we were going to the gas. <laughs> This is going to be the longest show ever. I know, guys. I'm tired. Uh, I, I, I got to take a nap between I the know. guests. Jesus. I got to take a bathroom break. Right. Uh, I thought Frank was the guest. I know. <laughs> All right. So you prevent happy... Well, hold on. You prevent your happiness every time you criticize yourself. Very true. So what's we so all do that. interesting is so many people don't realize, like when we say, you know, love yourself and be nice, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, yeah, 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 I know what that means. But you really <laughs> don't because what happens is so many times we're so hard on ourselves in mm -hmm. our minds. Yep. So whether it be we're not where we want to be, we're not making as much money as mm -hmm. we want to have, or we're not in the jobs that we want, mm -hmm. or we're not feeling as good as we want. Or in the relationships that we want. Or in the be. relationship mm -hmm. that we want. Or we don't look the way we want to look. Listen, mm -hmm. we all want to lose five pounds. That's called normal, okay? So, <laughs> Except for the Japanese. They don't need to lose. They don't and need they to lose. And they eat five. a lot of rice. Uh, I don't get that. I don't get it, guys. I don't get it either. I know. Uh, do they do keto so, there? No, they don't. <laughs> right, okay. I had so much rice last week. I think I gained 20 pounds. Um. See, that would be an example of not nice. So, <laughs> the whole point is be really aware of how you think in your mind because you have to be your biggest cheerleader because mm -hmm. you're, you're all you got. That's really it. True. What you're thinking, be nice to yourself. Mm -hmm. If you screw up, just be like, all right, no worries, I got this. Because if you are yourself, <laughs> you want to be, because again, you're all you got. So just be aware of what you're thinking and be nicer to yourself and give yourself props, people. Yeah! yeah. And I also do a kids program <laughs> because who wouldn't want to know how to love life and be happy? I wish I did 10? when I was a kid. Me too. So for more information, go to StarLovingLife.com. I also uh, I kids also program. Have, yeah, I also have a program for kids going into college. Which you think about, it's such a great time to start over, start fresh, be mm -hmm. the best version of who you are, mm -hmm. and that could happen when you go from high school to college where you can really just be that person that you've always wanted to be and not have that other stuff follow you. Awkwardness or whatever yeah. the hell you have when you and go to college. not knowing who you are, yeah. not being clear, not appreciating yep. who you are and trying to fit in. No way. So not for us. Not for us. We stand out. <laughs> <laughs> So for more information, and we would if and we you would. and I were going to college, forget know, about it. Exactly. It would be a nightmare. It would be a pink every day. Who knows? <laughs> uh, People would be like, "Who the hell are those two broads?" Exactly. And pink? But we'd be the coolest ones. Drinking there. Tito's. But we'd be happy people. Eating skirt steak every night. That's right. So for more information, go to startlovinglife.com. <laughs> yeah. Now it's time for my what the f segment. I want. Well, I want to say this. Where I bring you all the celebrity gossip and. I, before we even show mm -hmm. the picture, this is like the prettiest couple <laughs> I've ever really, seen. Not really, Connie. I've seen prettier. You don't think so? No, nah, I've seen prettier. I watch all the Bachelors and Bachelorettes. Really? Nah. Uh, I think they're kind of pretty. I know you wrote that, but I was like, eh, uh, right. I'm not really into the new really? Bachelorette. But anyway. The <laughs> they're kind of a pretty couple. The story is for this couple. Hannah, who's ever watching the Bachelorette right now? Is anybody in the audience watching Any the Bachelorette? people? Yeah. Oh, just Natalie. Yeah. That's it, guys? Come on. Nobody Pretend watches you the watch reality TV, people. Just what do you guys have? Too much CBD cream <laughs> on you? That was going on. You're falling asleep? That was going on, Dr. Larry. Come on. <laughs> He's one of the front runners, Jed. Right? Nice looking guy. Beautiful. But he forgot to mention he had a girlfriend before he went on the show. Oh. Who does that? Well, that's my whole point of the What the F segment. He had a girlfriend for four months before he went on the show. He promised her, don't worry, nothing's going to happen. I'm just going on for my musical career. He's a country Music? singer. He's not even an actor? He's a country singer. Right. <laughs> and he just wanted to go on to get fame, as most of them probably do, right? And his girlfriend agreed? Yeah. She's like, yeah, I trust him. He's not going to end up. She didn't think he was going to end up in the front running. And he did? And he did. He's one of the front runners now. She doesn't know if he ended up with her. And now the story comes out. Oh, you had a girlfriend for four months before he went on the show. I would fire him. He told her he loved her. Don't worry about anything. No. I'm not going to fall in love. This and that. She's an idiot. Yeah, there's the girlfriend that he had. There's the girlfriend that he had. He, she did a whole interview. She has nice teeth. And I feel bad for her. I know. She's an idiot. Well, I'm sorry. All right, go ahead, Connie. If Tell us your take on it. If your boyfriend says, I want to go on The bachelor. Yeah, yeah, The bachelor. Yeah, what would you do? I'd be like, oh my God, that's so cool. 
Goodbye. I'm not going to date you anymore. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. All right. I support you. Right. I'm going to move on. Exactly. That's right? what most normal people I'm gonna would go do. I'm going to go on The Bachelor. But is she that, supported him. Up? Yeah. But she supported him. No bueno. And now he ended up as one of the last people mm -hmm. that she may pick to get Who engaged to. that? That's, These people do. That on reality TV. That's, that's why it's crazy. That's definitely a WTF. Because what does that even mean? All I know is... She's gonna. She's a heartbroken now. <laughs> she deserves it. You're an idiot. Sorry. <laughs> well, she kidding. loved him. I do feel bad for her on that yes, part. Yes, exactly. But I would never date somebody who would say, "I'm going on the Bachelorette." Uh, bye. Is it Hannah? Hannah's the Bachelorette. Yeah. So Stacy Wink says yes, and I don't like Hannah. Oh yeah. She's, so see, Stacy watches it. She knows. She's too dramatic. We don't like drama. No. I don't, else like, you're I, don't like, the I don't like her either. Whatever, anyway. But yeah. Anyway, so we're super so excited. We're going to have a great show. It hasn't started yet. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm ready to go to bed. Exactly. Jesus. Okay. So listen, guys. Get a refill right now, okay? Because you have about three minutes to get a cocktail, uh -oh. fill up, and we're going to come back with Dr. Dr. Larry, Larry Good. Good. He's going to solve all of our aches and pains. And I have a lot of them. And we're back! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Very good! Good! In the house! In the date night house! He's gonna get rid of all of our aches and pains if you have sciatica. Anything. What else? What else? Uh, cramps? Come on! <laughs> no, no, that's, no cramps! That's that's not not yet. Yet. Let's not get too far into that. <laughs> Larry wants to do one step at a time. He wants to do the normal aches and pains. I that know, we but have, first right? of all, I want to point out that Larry, Dr. Larry, you wore pink for us. What a beautiful I pink know. shirt that you chose. Thank you. You look great. I'm the third best looking person sitting in front of the camera. <laughs> 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 Larry, I was going to say that you're the first. I was going to give it all to you. Come on. I'm the third best looking <laughs> That was awesome. Who dressed you, Dr. Larry? I dressed myself. Oh, probably as funny as Judy. Yeah. You do? Know saying, it wasn't Judy? Well, you know, we actually have a dresser. We have oh, someone who comes in every day. I love it. Picks out my clothes. I want a dresser. I love and it's it. really, you know, it gets a little, little into the underwear Judy's and the socks and stuff. It's exciting. But, yeah. So we're super excited. This is the first time that we have a doctor in the house. I love doctors. You know and me. Dr. Larry you know me, is like Connie. the best doctor ever. I love so doctors. So all love the important <laughs> questions. I love going to the doctor. I love I love going to the doctor. But I might be one of the very few that likes going to the doctor. I really need, do. You need a cool doctor. I really do. Not every doctor is cool. I'm only going to Doctor Larry now. I'm only going to him. What sign are you, Doctor Larry? I'm an Aquarian. Oh, oh, you're right before me. I'm Pisces. That's why I like him. Listen, All unless right. you're a Pisces, she's got nothing to say, Larry. <laughs> don't, don't take offense <laughs> to that. Yeah. I'm a Libra. Yeah, so listen. Like mute. We're, you know, we're, we're living free here. <laughs> <laughs> We're living for a year. So yeah. I, I, I really He's a gastro wanted doctor. to answer a question for everybody here tonight. Okay, what is you know? the... Uh... And, and about a month ago, I gave uh, the keynote speech at the New York State Pain Society meeting. Oh, yes. wait, I, I didn't and know I that. I started the talk by saying that there was a headline in oh, the New good. York Times about a month earlier that asked the question, why is CBD everywhere? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And it that's is. really the question we want to talk okay, about Okay, why is it everywhere? Why is CBD everywhere? Yeah. And CBD is everywhere because people have realized that conventional medicine doesn't really have all the answers. Mm -hmm. And Very people true. are looking for natural things mm -hmm. to help relieve certain symptoms. And, you know, the proof that we've, you know, me, my whole career, my profession, the yeah. phone's short in a lot of ways. You know, think about the opioid epidemic. Yep, 72,000 Americans wow. died last year of mm. opioid overdoses. Oh think about God. how bad a job we do in treating anxiety and depression yes. mm -hmm. and the medications that we have. So there's this tremendous interest in natural products. You're right. Mm -hmm. And CBD is a naturally occurring molecule mm -hmm. that can be extracted from a plant that's called a cannabis sativa plant. Yep. And that plant can either be a hemp plant or a marijuana plant oh, okay. based upon how it's genetically engineered and grown. So we are very interested in extracts that come from the hemp plant. Okay. And the reason for that is that the hemp plant genetically cannot make THC. So all the things mm. that make people high when they use marijuana yes. is related to THC. Oh, but is all that of, true? Yeah, I yeah. Know that. But all the medicinal properties mm -hmm. that are attributed to hemp and marijuana comes from CBD, which stands mm -hmm. for cannabidiol. Oh. And so 
human beings and actually all mammals have a system called the endocannabinoid system, oh, which is how the body. Oh, no, no, no. I don't know. So, so you lost me at that. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. going to take you right through this. You better educate us because a lot of people don't even know what CBD is, and I'm glad that you said what it stands for. It's really important to understand that this is a naturally effective mm -hmm. molecule. Mm -hmm. And so this huge industry has, has developed not only in the United States, around the whole world. And the, the problem that exists in the industry is that it's completely unregulated. Mm. And it's unregulated because the government is completely schizophrenic right. about mm -hmm. CBD products. So CBD is legal in all 50 states and has been for a long mm -hmm. time. But it wasn't until December of last year that the Farm Bill passed and was signed into law that removed DEA restrictions mm -hmm. on the sale and development of CBD. So there's very little research that's been done. And my company, which is called Good Pharmaceutical Development Company, I like the name. Tell us about. So listen, yeah. we know you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. well, well, let's, but yeah, let's. How do you you're a from, gastro doctor, so yeah. Right. Right. So how do you go from? Listen, we know many people. That I need do a gastro that. doctor. So. Right. Well, that's, another, that's another episode, people. <laughs> but how, how do you? How do that's you, more of an X-rated episode. <laughs> <laughs> Again, right. <laughs> so now, but Larry, how do you go from, and I, we have a question for you too, but I just want to get a little background. How do you go from being a doctor mm -hmm. to wanting to create a product yeah. that has this? Like what inspired you to do that? Was it something that you said this has to be done or it's a necessary? So it, it's, a, it's a really interesting story and it's an interesting evolution because mm -hmm. about six or seven years ago, a group of people came to me who were applying for a medical marijuana license in New York State. Okay. Oh. And I had done a lot of research in naturally occurring molecules okay. as it affects the digestive system. And they were looking for someone to have a leadership position in developing a medical orientation for a medical marijuana company. Okay. And so that company eventually didn't get a license for medical marijuana. Mm. but. In an odd way, I became kind of an urban legend. No, oh my God. I was interviewed by every newspaper, every really? newspaper. I had radio talk interviews, and I made myself into an expert on this. Mm. Oh, good and, for you, Larry. And because of that experience, I was named to um, a, a faculty position at Thomas Jefferson University okay. in Philadelphia, where I'm a member of the Lambert Center Steering Committee for Hemp and Marijuana Research. Wow. wow. And so once we started getting involved in that, I realized that CBD was the answer to a lot of different problems. Okay. And then we had to make a decision about how we were going to use CBD. Right. Because right? how, how can you deliver it? You know, there are a lot right. of different ways. Right. There's oils you can do and there's so, creams. Like, how do you right. decide so what to do? So there are people who take CBD orally. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are people who vape CBD. Oh, I know those. Things. There yeah. <laughs> are... Yeah. Now, topicals. Right. And we which this is yours, right? This product. This is our product, which okay. is called Pain I'm TX. I'm going to show it. And um, it it's a cream. High, it's a cream. It has the, it has the highest concentration oh, wait, of I don't CBD in okay. any unwrap product it? that's available. So it's shrink wrap for safety. Don't eat it. So Should I unwrap it or yeah, no? pull it apart, yeah. <laughs> He's like, pull it apart. <laughs> Come on, Vada, do your job. Can we, can we use this for gastro issues? Or? No, you can't. Okay. You can't. How do we so this is, and you can't smoke it. Can and if you smoke tried it? to smoke it, you wouldn't get high. <laughs> because it doesn't have an THC in it. But you could try it anyway. Larry, what is this mainly for? People with sciatica? So this is for people who have sciatica, who have neuropathy, who have athletic injuries, okay, who so have I see. Mm -hmm. muscular pain, who have tendon issues, who wow. have osteoarthritis, and it's odorless. I know, I, I can tell that. You, it's odorless. Which is good. It, um, it doesn't leave any stain. You can rub it into your skin. I think you rubbed it into your I skin. I rubbed it in, and I swear to God. Feel like? I, where's the gentleman that kept asking me if I feel better? Who was it? There he is. <laughs> so, I really that? did. He kept checking in. I swear to God, I have very bad pain in my upper and shoulders. And so that was about forty-five minutes ago. Yeah, and it, and, it, and it's weird. I swear to God, I feel better. I feel looser. Right. I don't know what it is. I so, just, so, I just, no, I so, swear to God. So I, I would well, just say it if I didn't mean it. No, like I, 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 I swear that. to God, this I really do. Honest. And so while I was enjoying the little routine that the two of you were going through. No, the little routine. Uh, you uh, doing. So I, I distributed uh, some Oh, you distributed that some? We, 
that we that we put together for tonight. Oh. And in there is a clinical study that we recently had published. And we are the only company that has published clinical data to support the safety and efficacy of a CBD product. Wow. Really? And that's, oh my yeah. God, that's friggin' amazing. And, and, and what makes this product unique is that one, the delivery system is patented mm -hmm. so that nobody else can use the same delivery system. Okay, good. Two, we have 2,200 milligrams of CBD in that one ounce jar. What? Wow. And so the average product has about 50 milligrams of CBD in it. And this has how much? 2,200 So, <clears throat> can you tell us exactly what is it doing that it's making us so, feel relief? So like, is it numbing us? No. So, so what we have in our skin, in our joints, mm -hmm. in the muscle tissues, we have receptors that are called CB1 and CB2 receptors. And CB2 receptors will stop pain signals from mm. being sent to the brain. That's incredible. So That's unbelievable. When you apply the cream to a painful area, the CB2 receptors are activated. Wow. And this now gets a little sticky, but it activates something oh, called a G protein coupled receptor. Okay. And that turns off calcium and potassium ions from sending signals to the brain. Okay. What about somebody who needs, who's been told they need surgery? So, you know, this doesn't cure. A broken bone. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cure rheumatoid arthritis or lupus or ankylosing lupus. I thought I had lupus. But it's interesting you that you just you brought that up. I got tested but, for lupus. But it will. It but it will virus? relieve the pain. Okay. It and it really, I, I got told that Hajimoto uh, antibodies. So all the women in the room doctor. should now stand up because they all have Hajimoto <laughs> antibodies. <laughs> The whole audience has Hajimoto. This is great. Hajimoto exactly. on Judy <laughs> Everyone has it. You know. So, so what it's great for is safe, non-systemic, works okay. locally, no side effects, relief of symptoms, and it's effective for acute injury and chronic injury, and the, the paper that we distributed yes. out there tonight, and which is available on our website, okay. um, it is effective for up to about six hours. Wow. And people so we have to apply it every six hours? Well, the first couple of days, I suggest people use it about every two hours, okay. and then all of the receptors get saturated, okay. and then it has a longer duration of action. And even more interesting in our clinical study was that people who used it for 14 consecutive days yeah. had a 30% reduction in their baseline pain. Wow. So That's So that they were better each day before the day That's started. That's unbelievable. Now, so we're very proud of that. Is there a difference between if you have an injury, right, and you have pain versus when you have stress <clears throat> and you have a pain? Is there any difference in how it helps So you? that's a really a, a great question, and that's actually, you know, kind of a GI question. Oh, really? Because mm. cause stress and gastroenterology are, you know, <laughs> yeah. together. Yeah. So the same thing that triggers smooth muscle in our intestine to go into spasm is exactly what causes skeletal muscle to go into spasm. Mm -hmm. So if you have poor ergonomics at work, mm -hmm. or you have mm -hmm. poor posture, or you're slumping over and you're feeling really bummed, mm -hmm. and you start to get neck pain, mm -hmm. so the skeletal, muscle goes <laughs> in, the, the skeletal muscle goes into spasm, mm -hmm. and this relieves that muscle spasm. Wow. So right. Now Larry, this isn't a cream formula, but what yep. is the difference, because we do have Nancy, who is our dear friend who we love, Nancy oh, yeah. Zudi. What did she have? She had so back. Basically she said that um, because of CBD, she's been using it for seven months. Um, and she's been using Larry's? No, but CBD in general. So okay. she's now off her cholesterol medication. Mm -hmm. And so our heart doctor cannot believe that her cholesterol has dropped to the extent that she doesn't need medication. Wow. So now she's doing the CBD oil. What is the difference and what made you do the cream? Okay. Like, what is the difference? So that's a, a terrific question and it's an interesting observation about this individual's cholesterol and so on. Right. But one of the... the she might be part of my family. <laughs> Nancy Bowes. That part of, it all makes sense. Is that part of your papa's not your papa, but your papa don't know? <laughs> she, should be, she should be part of my family. Yes. But, Dr. Yes. Larry. But, but there's, there are a lot of things that we don't know about CBD that have to give us pause for concern. And one of our, our main focuses at Thomas Jefferson is understanding something called pharmacokinetics mm -hmm. and pharmacodynamics. I don't and know those what Those are that big is. words, Tell hard us. to no. understand. But pharmacokinetics are what, hap what the body does to a drug hmm. when it's 
ingested or distributed. Okay. And pharmacodynamics are what the body does, what the drug does to the body. Okay. So pharmacodynamics are what happens when you take a drug in the liver, mm -hmm. in the kidneys, in the brain, and in the intestine, and in the muscles. But we're just beginning to understand what happens when we administer CBD orally. So for example, one of the observations we've made in some of the studies that we've done at Jefferson is that in an acidic, in an acidic environment like your stomach, where right. there's a lot of acid, yeah. CBD gets almost immediately converted to THC. Oh. So some of the effects that are attributed to CBD administered orally or as a sublingual is because some of it becomes THC. Oh. Now, CBD administered orally also activates serotonin receptors, mm -hmm. and so all of you are familiar with Paxil and of Prozac course, and so course. on. Of course, of course. All terrible and so, for you, which... And so it is possible... <laughs> they're all horrible for it you. Is you taking them out. It I don't believe in them. It is I don't possible believe in them. that CBD systemically could have a salutary effect. Mm -hmm. We just don't know that. It hasn't yeah. been studied, right. we don't have data, and it's not really responsible, in my opinion, to suggest that we use systemic CBD. So we decided on using a topical cream because it doesn't get okay. absorbed. Our, the, the formula we use keeps it in a certain level of the skin where there are nerve endings, but not blood vessels. So wait, are you and saying the oil they ingest? Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. So I wait a minute. It was topical. No, the oil they, they usually take drops. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes they use okay. capsules. Oh yeah, it's and like so when on. we do the, the flower essence drops in our water. Yes, it's the same type of thing. Yeah. Right. Oh. Right. So I we have to be really that. careful because we don't really understand the pharmacology yeah. Yeah. Okay. of this so well. Because oh, <laughs> what's so exciting is the fact that there is a product like this on the market. I know. And that we are trying to help people because I know even I know when I'm stressed out, I get neck pain. We talk about back pain. I have very bad upper shoulder. Tennis. You know, so for more information, where can someone find out about this product in case they're interested? Yeah, it certainly could help a lot of people. Besides it, going to your house and robbing you blind for all the right. CBD creams, you can go to our you can go to our website, <laughs> goodpharmadevco.com. Oh, you got to spell that. All right. G O O D. Good Pharma. P H A R M A. Okay. D E V C O dot com. Okay. D E V C O dot com. So for more information, because this is very, I have to say, obviously we all suffer from pain and aches. Everybody has pains and aches, it, it's sciatica, oh cramps. All right. Both. <laughs> I'm too old to right. bring into the damn exactly. study. I was so looking so, forward to doing it. So, I was so excited. I'm like, yeah, Doc, I'll do it. He's like, ah, nah, you're too old. So, Larry, just just before we close out, womp, just womp. tell people, so they would purchase it, and then what? You apply it topically? How often? I know you said So, there, oh, yeah. there, there are instructions on the jar, of course. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's applied topically every four to six hours. Okay. You can't put it in your eyes. It's oh, not, no, it's no. Not for, it's not for Can you put it in your internal mouth? use. Okay. Okay. And we, oh. we actually think that there may be applications for skin inflammation. It's one of the <gasps> areas that we do intend to study because wow. there is some. I need that. There is some preclinical. <laughs> no, I really There is do. some preclinical data that that, really that might be something that's useful. But but our commitment, you know, we're very serious. You know, we're having fun tonight. But but I'm very no, I really very want very, the skin one. very are you serious. When are you doing the skin one? About this <laughs> and. I have and, slight and, rosacea. And so we have, we have an agenda it. that, you know, we have a hierarchy of things that we're going to study. I swear to God. But we're going to study them yeah. before people start using it. Of course. Of Can course. I do the rosacea one then? Yes. Oh, I'm not too old for that, guys. <laughs> Thank God. So, Larry, so for more information, because we all got pains and aches, how do we relieve these? So, all right, so again, give us your website. Goodpharmadevco.com. What about at your office? Is it at your office, too? Is this at your so office? So this is available at my office, I'm which, going there, which is where? at 444 Don't Merrick Road in Lindbrook, New York. I'll be there Monday. We're there every day. Every day? I'm going to be there, Larry, every day. We have a <laughs> warehouse in Garden City. Oh! I won't reveal the location. No, yet. no. I'll be there. Larry, I see. You got Larry. too far already. You're going to have a little stalker over here. Larry, you're going right, to be guys. really upset so, that you met me. So, <laughs> TX. so for more information, you can even on Facebook go and to Pain TX. Okay. You can look up the page. There's more information. We all have pains and aches. This sounds like a really great product. Well, Connie doesn't. And we have to learn about it. Great job, Doc. All right. Thank I you, everybody. Awesome. Thank you. I already feel good from applying it to my shoulders. And we're back. Yeah. Great doyle in the house. Oh. World renowned musician.
Revolution. Heck yeah. I'm giving you that title, Frank. Thank you very much, Well Chrissy. renowned. <laughs> well renowned. <laughs> you just had a great guest, you know. Of I course. mean, you're a great Come guest, too. Legend Larry. Come on. You and got two wait legends. A minute. May I share? Yes, go ahead. But Larry is my friend, but he's also my doctor. And I'll, I'll tell you two truth things. Where'd you apply the cream? I'll tell you it. two <laughs> true things. I want to know where you applied the cream. Well, his hands. He plays lots of piano. And two things he said among the many are true. What? First is that the cream is freaking amazing. It is. I've oh. tried it. I it use is. it on my neck. That's where I put it. And the thing he said is, is true. It's not going to fix the problem, but it relieves the of pain. Of course, and everybody needs and, a relief. And I live it. The second thing that he said, which was pretty amazingly true, amazingly is that you are asleep when he does his cold nose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is a fact. And I, I hope and, you are. And I do appreciate that, that, Larry. Thank you. Very I much. already had a cold nose from back in like 2005. Well, it sounds I'm like the next one is up ahead. I told you I like to go to doctors. You I do. Like to, you do. I, I don't know. I don't I, know I, I, I'm, a, I'm a hypochondriac. Right, she thinks she's Hashimoto's. I don't even know what that means. I was told I have the Hashimoto uh, antibodies. Oh, in my, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I got to yeah. talk to the doctor after What he does is amazing. He does. Dr. Larry, don't leave without me speaking to you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we wanted to do the first segment about health and about well-being and, you know, obviously pains and aches yeah. and leaving that. And then we wanted to also do a fun segment because we also love music. I, I love it. I love music more than Connie. She does. And I will say this, though. We are filming out of Eagle Chase in Woodbury. That's right. And the reason why we did this show the is we have ever. so many talented people. <laughs> that live here. That you, live, I, who would have known? You have all right, these celebrities. That live in this community, which is really that big. Jesus. And it's literally 99 units. It's a private gated community. Jeff and I moved here three years ago. We were in awe of who lives here and our neighbors. And it was just like a, Look at a great <laughs> Listen. You're so no, right. No, I've never come on, Frank. <laughs> no, but I'm going to say this. When we moved in, when you move into a place, you have no idea. Yeah. We had no expectations. The neighbors that live here are the most amazing, friendly, happy, fun mm -hmm. people. Frank, do and we just saw Dr. Larry Good. Who I know. You have an amazing community. artist, our right. pencil artist. We have a John, pencil artist, John, who was, John? Yeah. was on our show. He was on our show. We got ex-meet low keyboardist right. Frank Doyle in the house. Right. He's an amazing musician. I wish he brought his keyboard. He would have played for us live on the air, by the way, Jeff. We got to have him play live. he's also the head of the social committee at Eagle Chase. Like, he does everything. <laughs> he is? Yes. That deserves applause. You're in charge <laughs> of the social <laughs> committee. <laughs> You better it's get like, some good live music. With my yet. lovely wife Maria. With we, Maria, you know. of course. <laughs> but like literally, they have brought the fun back. I'm not saying it wasn't there, but it just they yeah. Up, they have upgraded the All right. fun in Eagle Jay's community. And love you. You guys are responsible. <laughs> you guys are responsible. All right, fine. So Frank, we love yes. you. You've been here a bunch of times before. I have. We love I you. I enjoy the show. I know you're Thanks, an amazing Frank. musician, which I can't wait to Thank have you. you play live on the air. One day, which That'll we will have next. you play. Yes. Yeah, happy he said to, he would have brought his it. keyboards and he would have did it live on the air. Live on the air. That's how like this one loves it. I do know. you? <laughs> just one quick question before we interview you. Yeah, sure. Do you? Can you play Toto Africa? <laughs> Frank, so, say no. Africa by Toto. Yeah. 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 Oh my God. I love That's it. it. it That's all it, it takes. One it. song. Unbelievable. I That's my favorite song. So Victor. Beethoven means no, nothing. Nothing. But Toto by Toto Africa. Toto Africa. I love. <laughs> That's my favorite. Why song. did I take all those damn piano <laughs> lessons? <laughs> That's a great. That's that. a great segue, though. <laughs> Why did you get into it? Frank, but you we, toured with Meatloaf, who I loved. I love Meatloaf. Yes, it was tons of fun. Obviously. I mean, how the hell did yeah, that I, even yeah, happen? We yeah, want to know. Do, well, first of all, tell us how you started to get into music. Yep. What that was about. Yeah. And then how did you end up going into Meatloaf, which we all know Meatloaf is yeah, such an extraordinary yeah. opportunity. It was an music. opportunity. So, Absolutely. So how did you start? Well, he's very calm but about it. He's like, whatever. But it's a very short, quick story. I mean, I always played piano at 12 years old. No way. No one doesn't always play well, piano. Well, I, I started really young. You played piano, you loved Connie? It? Yes. Well, my parents made me do it. But All right. my, my parents, parents did. I stopped. <laughs> I stopped. I hated it. All right. But at 12 years old, I quit to play baseball. And then at 15, no these guys called the Beatles came out. Oh, God. And that? ever ah. since that day, when I heard uh, Sergeant Pepper, <coughs> I got a rock organ, listened to the doors, and wow. I was sold from then on. And really? I got serious, yeah. But did you, did you know how to play? You just took like a little lessons at no, 12? No, I took or? a lot of lessons. Oh, you just took oh, yeah. said his parents so, made yeah, yeah, him do it. Right. Made so did mine. I still can't play. Huh? I'm sorry. I think yeah. you can play, Connie. You're so, just And then the, us. the segue is that I was playing weddings at uh, Leonard's of Great Neck. Oh, no way! Oh, yeah. Wow. 
And then one week later, I got a call from Meatloaf, and he said, no. you want to do a world tour. Wait, that hold on. That's back what happened. You're playing what? Leonard's a great no. guy, and then Meatloaf no. calls you, no. and he's like, he hey, did. He did. Frank, I heard you were really good at Leonard's. <laughs> you want to come tour with me? I was at the wedding. I was at the bar mitzvah. Yeah. <laughs> what good? What Little the Little Josh's bar mitzvah. I, I want to understand what happened. Yeah. Um, that well, I mean, I, I did a lot of studio stuff. Obviously, I went to college for music right. and loved it, was passionate, and I went through a period where I played six hours a day, oh, literally, Jesus. for about four years. What? Every day. At home? Six hours at a day. Home. Yep. Six hours a day. And I was care? playing with all sorts of... I used to play with uh, Johnny McEnroe and Vetus Gerolitis. We what? had a rock band together. What? what? I know. Who would think? Why didn't you ever tell us... Oh, you wow. never asked. <laughs> He's a sticker caper. Are you kidding me? Yeah, but that was just a fun thing. Um, what about, did Dave Matthews ever ask you to play oh with them? Because if that ever happens, so let Toto, me know. <laughs> Dave and Matthews, and you're done, right? That's it? That's, that's, it. It. Um, that's it. No, but then um, I was doing some studio stuff. But uh, what is, when you say studio, what does that mean, though? It means I was doing some records in the city. So Short, your own. I love that he makes it seem so like no big records? deal. Yeah, I used to, I did studio work for Madonna. I played. No. I played on uh, the keyboards for you like a version. Tell us this. But how'd you, you get? Didn't. <laughs> well, wait. Ask. Frank, how did you get hooked up with Madonna that you because played? Because I was. You know what happens? Seriously. Let us know. When you're on yes, scene, mm -hmm. that's what it is. It's what? no magic. It's like you know. Everybody says you were so lucky. You got. You know, right. Right. And this yes, is good. But okay. what is luck? What is luck? Tell us. Being it's prepared your, for the right opportunity. It, that's correct. But you're, the fine. second step yeah. is Tell that us. you have to create the opportunity. Yes. I like what you're saying. That's the whole kicker. Okay. So what I did is I would go to the clubs at night and I would do every wow. gig I could for free. Oh, you would? I would play. Okay. I was Aww. in the city at the bitter end. You know, oh, I love the bitter end. I know. <laughs> the village gate. <laughs> and I would do everything I could for free. Wow. Just to get to know the people. Right. Wow. And then it came into producing and doing keyboards on records. Sure, I'll play for free. Mm -hmm. And then Smart. You get a real. The real goes from person to person. Then I got a big break with Japan. Japan? Yeah. Where's Frank Mullen? <laughs> you mean China. <laughs> He's gone. No. And I, I ended up producing a number one album. My first album no was way. Billboard number one. What? And then the rest was. Wait. That's how Madonna and heard. And. And that's how Meatloaf and called Al you? Yankovic, I, I was his Oh, yeah, director. let's talk about that, too. I loved love, Al. Love Al. I loved him. Love you, Al. Wait, hold on. Let's, well, let's not forward. All right, so you go to Japan, you yeah. get number one. I didn't go. Whatever. No. He came here. Right, all right, so you right. do the number one in the Japan. The Japanese came to Frank. Right. People, yeah. people find out about the Madonna, she what? Her company approaches you, her management or whatever? It's it's management, her producer. And like, Jellybean Benitez. Yes, of course. Uh, so they say, are you going to be the keyboardist on? No, I did not do, I did the 12-inch dance record. Who that's cares? So cool. Whatever, that yeah. is so cool. Why are you saying it like that? I know. Well, no. it wasn't like the single. So? Frank, would you stop it? <laughs> Did you hear my quote? <laughs> Come on, exactly. Thank you, Maria. Frank, I love how he downplays so, right. everything. So, you're part of Madonna. Now, at that point... I'm you, not part of Madonna. You're part she of... She was in a window. <laughs> she she Frank, was in a window on the other side. <laughs> I'm not so, part now, of Madonna. at that point, Frank, are you saying like, Oh my God, this is pretty cool. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Thank you. Are you going home like, holy crap? I know. But you know who the number one all-time queen for me was? Yeah. Was my hero, Brian Wilson. Wow. Of the Beach Boys. Oh, of course. Oh, when I played No way, with, yeah, really? And that was a, an amazing Aww. session for me. So, Wait, what about when, when did that happen? It was just a studio. It was a demo. Not a big thing. It wasn't a record. But just to uh, see him sitting there, because he's my all-time hero. But what about when you were on tour at Me Love? You were like, holy crap, I made it? Well, yeah, I mean... <laughs> so, yeah, how did that happen? Well, the funny thing is, my first, one of my first gigs was at Wembley Arena in London, okay. which was 30,000 people. How was, wait, oh how was that one of your first gigs? Because... We I love it first, like, I'm sorry, no, this is not I'm making sense to me. It's not making sense. No, it's not. How do you go from, Lennon's a great I, But it was literally a couple of weeks. <gasps> you know, I, I, want know, I want to know. I want the audience to what feel. The hell? Right now, I'm confused. So, You're so I was doing... He's like, 30,000. We did the Palladium, and he almost kicked me out of the band because he I had a small beard and he says shave the oh, beard really? off or, or oh. out of the best so I did. Oh. But um so then we went to Wembley Arena and it was like <laughs> So he says we're going so you're on tour. Right on this tour is what you know you're so on. For the you shaved your beard you're and on it was being tour. recorded for a live album. Oh my god like live at Wembley Arena. So so in the middle of the show we do it we get off stage then I come back for the encore and we there's a song <laughs> called Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. Oh my of god. course I love that song. That song. That's so song. And Two you know, it was cold out three so it's like you know and all this yeah. and he walks up on the piano riser and puts his head on my shoulder. 
And he goes, baby, we can talk. Oh, you have and, a good singing second, voice. For a second, I go, that's me, Loaf. Oh <laughs> On myself, you know? And I go, I was just at Leonard. So, so it did. I was just at Leonard last week <laughs> with about 30 Jewish people. Now I'm here in front of 30,000 people. But seriously, that was the moment that it was like, wow, this is, this is wow. cool. This is cool. Oh my God. That's yeah. when you said this is freaking cool. Yeah. yeah that's that you, moment, that's I'll never forget it. it. It was like, yeah. And the matches and the whole thing. You know? wow. 30,000 people. Oh, that I, was never, I never lived that experience playing at the, uh, you know, at, oh, yeah. at Leonard's, uh, Leonard's <laughs> whatever. <laughs> now, when you found out about that gig, were you excited? Were you? I was. Were you like, uh, I were had, you like oblivious. I had no idea I wanted to do it. Okay. I had done a lot of things in the music business, but never live. Yeah. Hmm. And he literally called in the afternoon at like four and said, "So do you want to do it?" I go, "Well, I need a little time." <laughs> Can did I? You, did and he goes, audition or anything? No, no. I was recommended because of... I was I recommended. So, That's great. So then he called back at 8, and I thought about <laughs> it, and he said, six months. I go, okay, I'll do that. But then it ended up, of course, it never is six months. After that really? phone call, were you like, holy crap, calling everybody like, me love, just call me. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, you, it, was, it was literally going to Sam Ash in the city, and he <laughs> said, you got 30,000 bucks. Buy all the equipment you can get for really? 30,000. Yeah, so and, he gave you money? That's how it works? Yeah. No way. I remember I Sam Ash to, to the city. To get equipment. Oh, wow. And you knew what to get, and you like were like, oh my yeah. god. It was like kid and candy. That's what I'm saying. Like that sounds like a lot yeah. of money for what you need. Yeah. Especially back then. Are yeah. you kidding me? Yeah, it was fun. It was but I love that he's all fun. modest about it. I it was know. fun. It was like Thirty thousand people. <laughs> he put his head as my shoulder, and I was like, oh, there we go. So <laughs> you weren't stage fright when you were on when you were on stage and I gotta be honest, no. Thirty thousand people. And no, and I'll tell you why. I'm more stage fright being on your wonderful show. Why? Family. Really? Yeah, because... Look well, at this beautiful <coughs> audience of Eagle Chase people. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, <laughs> These are all people you know. And love. They love the, you. The, the thing is, is that it was well oil machine. The band was fabulous. Yeah, and of course. everybody knew their parts. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, you know, you just do the right thing and it'll always be, you know, good. Was he cool in person? Was he... You want me to answer me that one? <laughs> on on yeah. TV? Really? Yeah, Meatloaf's not watching. Don't yeah, worry we, about um, it. Yeah. Sure. I'm gonna take that. Sure, as it was a great I'm gonna band. take that as a no. It was a great. It was a great band. But it, you know, it, yeah. it was. Well, we know from our experience with singers mm -hmm. of bands that they tend to be temperamental and they tend to have yeah. some egos, mm -hmm. and so that tends to be the norm. So I'm sure that's right. not he, much. He, I will say this: he's a phenomenal performer. Yeah. Three hour shows, and he's all high energy. That's running great. And back that's hard, and forth, that's hard to do. Ripping that's hard sweat. To do. I mean, yeah. he gives a thousand percent uh -huh. every single performance. And then, you know, he had asthma. Oh. So at the end oh, yeah, of the yeah. first... Chrissy, I'm sure Chrissy I, has asthma. No, that. I did know that. Sure I did, no, I don't have asthma, but I did know that. I didn't know he had asthma. Believe it or not, I did know that. But we'd have an oxygen we'd have an oxygen tent backstage. Really? No! And he would lay in it and we'd wait for this or this, whether we're going to do an encore because he was... Oh my god. 99 percent of the time. Shut was, up. Yeah, he. But he needed to just. Wow. Yeah, he was, he was oh, a great, my great God. performer. Wow. So, Fabulous. So Frank, all right. So you did that. That was a great stint. And so what was next after that? So you were like Milo. That was. Did Dave Matthews call you? I had a son. Oh, well, that you little go. thing. Oh, that little thing. Oh, see, how right. a child. You're a little meatloaf. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> a burger. Should, yeah, exactly. <laughs> a little burger. Um, a meatball. And, you know, I said that I, I was pretty done. I, you know, I didn't want to. Why? Tour... Exhausting? No. Touring is not no, exhausting. No, it's He's the absolute exhausting. opposite. Frank Vaughn. Frank Vaughn gets exhausted by touring. No. It's absolutely not. If you love doing had, it. We had the best chefs. We worked uh, out every day. Oh, wow. We slept. Uh, all right. It depends what you do. We doing. slept. Right, of course. Oh, no. So I was never in better shape. So wow. you had a, a little meatball, and then you decided to move on? And then I said either I keep touring and not be with my son. So that, that was the decision. That oh, was an easy one. No brainer. Really? So I got into education. Yes, right, you're so a music I, teacher, yep, right? I am indeed. And <laughs> Which is I play amazing. Jazz. But you also just became a doctor, which we're, I did. we're very proud of you. What? Not, not that doctor. <laughs> a different kind a doctor of doctor. Of what? Hajimoto? Yeah. No, I, I'm a musical doctor. A musical doctor. I'm a musical doctor. He, I like musical you, doctor. Frank has worked so hard, and we have followed his journey. Oh, thank and you, you. You have done such an amazing job, and you are so talented. And I have to say, 
I know, and we make fun of like I you know. know Frank. You're part of the so you head of the social committee, <laughs> but <laughs> when we go to our parties and Frank gets on the piano, but what? But he could have brought it tonight. He would have played for Where us. Where are we gonna put it? I That's don't know. what I thought. And you go home and get it for the time. after party. <laughs> Wait, Frank. Why did you? I need you to bring it back here for the after party. Why don't you after film the, the next show at our place That's where we have we'll a do. beautiful? That's piano. I'll That's what we'll love do. to do. Marie, is that okay if we bring a hundred people to our house? That's right. Is that okay? Marie's like, hey, bring them all. Exactly. He would have brought it. I want to hear you play, man. Oh, thank you. So, all right. So, tell us about what you're up to now. Because right, you're still involved right. in so many amazing things. Yeah, I've got a jazz quintet, Ooh, quartet, yes. trio. Well, and wait, you've come and see me. I love jazz. He's amazing. <laughs> and well, why can we go see you? Um, well, I'm playing now at the Polo Lounge. And wait, I love the Polo there. Lounge. You were? We saw Billy We just saw Mira. Billy Mira there. Oh, Do you know I'm there Billy? this coming That's Wednesday. Fair. This oh my Wednesday. God! Let's go this Wednesday. We're gonna go see you then. <laughs> we're that's, going. That's how you get a this gig. This Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> this we'll Wednesday, there. we're going to see you at the Polo Lounge. Yeah, it's, it's a great. And you know, they've got a beautiful piano. Is it just I'm, you? Bar, no, I'm with uh, my singer. Who's Heather, the singer? Heather Paris. Who's your singer? Heather Paris. Okay, Heather Paris. And the great, great Michael Hall on bass. One of Why the legends. Why does he sound familiar? He sounds he's familiar. Been he knows everyone. He's <laughs> amazing. I think I know him. So know. it's just a trio for this gig, but that's uh, all right. Yeah. But we wait. love the Polo Lounge. Right, yeah. so Frank, so tell us, you are you are a musical teacher at Northport High School. Right, and and yeah. I have to say that that's where he went to school. Right. Northport. Yeah. yeah, and a big a big Eight kudos seven. to Frank. Oh, okay, so you had to give your all right. <laughs> <laughs> a big kudos to Frank because he has such a relationship with his kids that he works well, of with, course. and that he teaches, and they love you, and you obviously see you have such a strong relationship, and that you teach them in such a way that makes such a difference. Which is very well, interesting. He's like, yeah. Thank you. Know, he's like, yeah. I know. That's the other thing. But I will say also, like, as a community, we love to support Frank, and he also plays at Grosso's. We do. Wait, yeah. where's Grosso's? Cold Spring, Cold Harbor. Spring Harbor. I love Cold Spring Harbor. Yes. Why don't we go there? He loves <laughs> Wait, when's that happening? I like Cold That won't be till October. Oh, my God. A lot of polo yeah. lads, though. Right. So we'll go to the see, polo lounge Wednesday. See Frank there, and he's amazing, and he's with his other people that he, he Thank plays you. with. And then. What's so what? exciting is because we love polo lounds. We were good. there. We had a good and I want to God. I ask you. I want to ask Frank what what songs he plays. Oh my, God, oh my gosh. Um, Just say. You, you ever hear something called the please. Great American Songbook? It's yes. like all oh, the Gershwin. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Look yeah, at yeah, Diana yeah. Krall. Mm -hmm. That, yes, that yes, yes, yes. Frank, you're putting her in error. She has no idea. But really? and we do Toto. We, we do a full Toto oh, set. Will you really do Did that it? work? There Frank, will you Nothing really do Nothing but Toto and Dave Matthews is <laughs> also <laughs> what She'll we do. She'll be there, but we won't be there, okay? No, Connie, you will be That's there. That's known as pimping for a gig. <laughs> <laughs> That's and what then that can is. you do wait for Connie? She wants wait. Wait. Yeah, whatever. Anyway. So, Frank, so what's new for you? So what's coming up for you? And All right, so you're back at Grosso's in October. What else? Well, I want to go there. I'm getting more. I'm going to be teaching college next year Ooh, where? at Five Towns College. Oh, that's amazing! <laughs> which is which is the master plan? Oh, to that's sort awesome. of weed my way out of high school and get into more. Would you ever sure. go on tour again with a no? Famous I've been band. asked several times, obviously. By Dave Matthews? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Toto. That Too bad, oh my God! Why did you go? <laughs> Let me be your manager. Um, I'll help you. I'll guide you in the right those. direction. But, but I'll share share one. Yeah. Amazing story. Yeah, I just got off, off a tour with Meatloaf, <gasps> and there were these three. I go to a bar in the village, and there's these three, six, five <laughs> black gentlemen, <laughs> and you know they sort of knew that I was whatever, and yeah. they said, "Hey, you played that," and they go, "Do you want to jam with us?" I go, "Well, Aww. you know, I don't know," and they were the Chambers Brothers from no the 1960s. Way. So I go, "Well." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So about a week later, we, we rented out a studio in Jamaica, Queens. It was summer in August. Yeah. There was no air conditioning. Oh, my we God. We played for 12 hours. No, you didn't. Oh, I lost play. nine pounds. It no, was, you what? didn't. It was... No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would have. But I'll it, was, go to it, it was like, that's the opportunities that come wow. up sometimes. That was so cool. So that Frank, is that so you're cool. pretty powerful, okay? But my favorite all-time person to play with is Al Yankovic. Yeah, well, really? Oh, yeah, tell well, us so about it. We didn't talk about that. We didn't talk about that, because that's very interesting. You did MTV with him? We had an MTV show together. And I worked at MTV. TV in the 90s. You did? Yeah. You don't watch the show because she says that every show. Yeah. <laughs> I, I worked at MTV, guys. Um, I took the train. It was horrible. Was we had, had it on mute. <laughs> yes. But you That's weren't. The, when were you there? What year? Oh, God. I was, late. I was maybe 1990. Every, 1990. Okay. I was there in 1998. 
1998. Right. 1998. But, but he was he was so he's such a brilliant man. Yeah. First yeah. Of all. I mean brilliant. Really. And um, he would come up and I had about ten keyboards and he had me locked in a cage. No oh my God. And um, he'd say, All right, I have a shrine to Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis. <laughs> Give me some voodoo music, and we go on in four minutes. <laughs> And, our show. And I then, like that. I and like then him. I would like program my computers, <laughs> and then the show goes up, and I push the button, and he's. It was just so fast paced. Really? He would he would strap hamsters in go karts <laughs> and go. I need Olympic music now. <laughs> and the hamsters crash. It was every night. Did you need to? It see? was brilliant. You know. <laughs> So um, how long did you do that for? It was just it was uh, forty episodes, I think we oh did a summer. Oh my gosh! But so were you stressed out? He would come into like... my cage and throw me a steak and, <laughs> <laughs> and start playing the keyboards. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. He's oh a great, God, great guy. Aww. Yeah. So do you still talk to him? No, no, nah, he's you know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, no, he's like no. People, people go off their ways. I well, know. Move on. Uh, you did a lot of yeah, cool yeah. things, man. You should you be did. proud of yourself. You should be very proud of yourself. You're too humble, Frank. I know you're too yeah. humble. I'd be like, yeah, yeah. man, I was playing I with us. We <laughs> love back in 1990, yeah, yeah, whatever. Exactly. Exactly. But you know, you know, the thing is, is that. I did that for such a short part of my life, and it's the one thing that people most want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Because I know, it, it, and it's, it's just no, Frank, no, you it's not annoying. I'm proud it's of very it, and entertaining it's good. And Except it's, it's just like you know, there's so much more that I'm proud of. And to I you, love. Yeah. to so you, me, not to other right. people. Oh, other it. people are like, oh my God, you but, played with oh. people. This. Still go when I'm, you know. Yeah. Proud. Oh, he used to do this. Yeah. And I'm going, that was 1988. <laughs> you know? Wait, I'm going to say right, this. I'm, get, I'm sorry. I'm guilty of it. And I will <laughs> tell you, I will tell you, there are people that live in our community who I love very much that I hope are watching right now. <laughs> are they here in our audience? I'm not familiar with a lot of the neighbors here just because they tend to like, and I totally respect that because when you live somewhere and you want to be private, I get it. Oh. But I love, and I'm very proud to say, that you know like we're having a show tonight we have dr larry good who created you know he's part of this new cbd cream and it's i'm amazing. taking it home with me guys and we have we have <laughs> I'm putting it everywhere we have I'm dr frank everywhere. doyle <laughs> no listen and so and and he's the former keyboardist of meatloaf oh well, he doesn't so want to be known as that know, and the social committee at eagle chase so, yeah <laughs> don't well, forget that well that's so secondary funny. that you should be at the social committee because you know who he was <laughs> But I will and he say played at Leonard's. That <laughs> you Don't forget Leonard's, guys. Of yourself. And Thank not you. to say that you're defining moment, not by any means. Thank you. But yeah. that's still freaking cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you on. gotta. So, yeah. I know you don't think it's cool because you is. did it. When you're the person in it and you, you don't think it's cool. It's like us. Right, exactly. Like if I was playing for Dave Matthews. <laughs> right, exactly. And people ask me, I'd be like, oh yeah, I played for Dave. Who cares? Whatever. Dave called me the other day. Who cares? Whatever. It's like no big deal, but like no, I, the I person on the I outside is like, deal. oh my God. I'm not saying yeah. it's not a big deal. Right. No, but you should be proud of yourself. Absolutely. And not that yeah. it's your defining yeah. moment because you've done right. so many amazing things. Exactly. But it's still freaking cool. Okay? But you're still a teacher. You're still a music indeed. teacher you're to this day. Yep. An instructor. It's amazing. Yes. I love yeah. it. But see, it's so, it's what I love to do is research music I don't know about. That's, that's why so I did my doctorate. Have you researched death metal? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Frank! That's a whole but other... Is Frank still here? No, he's probably oh. upstairs. Can, Can you, you know research? the interesting yes. fun fact? I want to hear that this. That Frank and I yes. are both in the Long Island Music Hall of Fame. Oh, no way! Yeah. Oh, and we, wait a minute. That's we a connection. We discovered that upstairs. No way. Really? And I said, really? You know? Yes. Not quite, sort of wow. <laughs> you were, that's interesting because when I saw Frank when he was inducted, Saul and Pepper was there. You did. And Saul and Pepper. Oh my God, he was there. Pepper so Pepper Frank was there. No, I was. Two, no. I was 2016. Oh he was my 2012. God. Oh, that's right. Because that's all right. So yes. <laughs> But see, you're both cool. I feel like right? going, it's a small world. <laughs> exactly. Because you're part of Eagle But Street, you should be proud like, of yourself. I know. You're Come a on. talented, talented musician. All right. So, Frank, if people want to follow your journey of what events you're going to be at, what restaurants you're going to be at, Bowl where can on people Tuesday. find we're, you? On Wednesday, we're going to be there. Um, at Eagle Chase Social Events Committee. <laughs> yes. That's and for the people the that don't live here, <laughs> we're going to see on Facebook. Right. Or? Yes. We. Um, the name of the band is Lush Life. Lush Life. Oh, I like that. Right. Excellent. So, Lush if you want to follow Frank, Frank, who's the <laughs> genius over here playing the piano in the background. Uh, Lush Life it is. And Polo Lounge. Polo Lounge on Wednesday.
I want to thank, thank, thank you both. Thank you both for inviting me here. We this love really you, Frank. Cool. Of course. <laughs> thank you for. <laughs> thank you. That was very nice of you. Guys, thank we you. love you. Thanks so much. We're going to be back next Friday. Yeah. 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 Get your CBD cream. Rub it all over. I'm going to rub it everywhere tonight. We know. <laughs> we know you are. Thanks, guys.